As I was walking through the common land of Boston on a beautiful spring day, I told a young child of my story, the story of Deborah Sampson and of Robert Shirtliff. The young child told me, you are like America's Mulan. <laughs> so there you have it. If I remind you of Huya Mulan, or perhaps Shakespeare's Portia in The Merchant of Venice, or any other brave female who dared to cross gender lines, I am the American heroine. I am the first woman to enlist, to fight in, and to be honorably discharged from the Continental Army. I received a pension for my military service. I survive as the official heroine of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the place that I have called my home since the days when we were just the Mass Bay Colony. There are very few women who can tell the story of the battleground as I can. But those who can know that those stories are often gruesome and even intriguing and inspiring. Some 230 years after I enlisted in the military, women are still not afforded the opportunity to fight on the battleground. The deafening shot of musket fire, the screams of my fallen brothers, the nauseating smell of brimstone and the black smoke which filled the air. That smoke was so black I couldn't, I couldn't see in front of my own nose. And that, that black smoke every time I tried to breathe, it was <coughs> produced nothing but a hacking cough. But these terrifying stories are stories for another day. Though I may not be the only woman to experience battle, I am one of the first, and I almost didn't make it in more ways than one. As a child of just five years old, I was cast out by my family, forced into indentured servitude. My mother, she could not afford to pay her debts, and I paid them for her. First as a seamstress's apprentice, and then later I was sent to the home of Deacon Jeremiah Thomas to work as a farmhand. Sun up to sundown, grueling, toiling. I worked in the fields doing a man's job, man's labor, but I am a woman. And I was denied the right to the most basic things like an education. Had it not been for the 10 sons of Deacon Thomas coming home every day and sharing their lessons with me, I don't know where I would be. I hungrily learned everything they taught me. I hungrily read every book I could find. But still, I was a second-class citizen. What would the military offer me? Opportunities beyond my wildest imagination, a career, financial assistance, learning skills that I could never have imagined. So one day when I was nearly 20, I mustered up my courage and I went to a local tavern. As I signed the name, Timothy Thayer, my hand was shaking, the, the sweat was pouring from my palms. I'm certain as that enlistment officer looked at me, he knew who I was and I, I was a coward. I failed to report for duty the very next day. But a few weeks later, I would summon up my courage once again, and I would walk from my Middleborough farm all the way to Bellingham, Massachusetts, and go to a tavern. And I stood before the enlistment officer, and I told him, I want to join the army for the balance of the war. I picked up the feather quill, and with my left hand, and my broken finger, which I could never properly bend from an injury sustained on the farm, I wrote my name, Robert Shirtleaf.
Now the stories of battle and how I was discovered and, and my honorable discharge are stories for another day. Today, I'd like to tell you more about what happened after my military service. Because I had served for 18 months as a man, as a first class citizen, and now I had to return to the role of a woman. I decided to go home to my mother, whom I had not seen since I was nearly five years old. And when I, I knocked on the door, she opened, and it was not the face of a loving mother. No, it was disgust. Disgust and hatred and apathy and just pure and utter dislike. My mother knew what I had done, and she hated me for it. She disowned me, and once again, I was an orphan. Not long after, I had the the fortune to meet a young man, a young farmer, Mr. Benjamin Gannett. We married, we had three children, and adopted a fourth daughter, Susanna. She was an orphan. I, I felt a kindred spirit to her as I had grown as an orphan myself. But my dear husband, Benjamin, he just did not have a knack for business. No matter how hard he tried, finances never were in our favor. And so once again, I shirked the roles of a woman. I had to find work. I began to speak, to lecture, to give speeches about my experience in the military. They billed me as the American heroine. I was the first female professional speaker. I even spoke at the Federal Street Theater in Boston. How can I stand before you now a second-class citizen, when I was the best soldier in my regiment, I watched this world change. I went from being a British citizen to an American one. I went from watching the flag waving overhead from a grand union flag to the stars and stripes. Yet long after we overthrew the oppression of King George the, the King George the Third, that fat's out. I was still oppressed. Women everywhere were still oppressed. I stand before you now as a second-class citizen, though I was the best soldier in my regiment. How can I be denied an education when my marksman skills were the best of those around me? How can I live the life of a second-class citizen just because I wear this mob cap and these petticoats? Why cannot? Why can I not hold a job or own property? I dare, I dare to break free of these shackles and these chains without this mob cap. Do I seem more deserving to you? When I wear a soldier's canteen and a possible's bag, do I now seem more a man to you? How about when I drape my continental jacket over my shoulder like so? Am I more deserving now? How do these garments entitle me the right to vote when my sisters are denied these rights and freedoms? These are questions I pose to you. Are my accomplishments so great for a woman? Are they so outlandish? When we meet again, we will discuss the colonial society in which I grew up. We will discuss how they rationalized this gender caste system, which I risked my life to defy. I am Deborah Sampson Gannett. I am your daughter of liberty and I am your son of liberty. I am your American heroine.